top 20 packs of cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! history, aka the top 20 cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. Let's go, baby. If you're ready for this video, smash the subscribe button. Let me tell you guys something right now. Let me tell you guys something right now. Electromite is a pendulum card. Electromite's a pendulum card. So get a tune Electromite clock. Clock mat right now before they sell out, baby. They are beautiful. And I look forward to this video. I can't believe it took me this long to make this video. Top 20 pendulum cards of all time. Smash the like button. Smash the subscribe button. And let's go, baby! Oh, boy. I'm excited. Get your Toon Electromite Cloth Play, man. And let's get it. All right. So, number 20 is Cleaford Scout. This card is... Oh, that's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. Cleaford Scout. The first of many. The first good pendulum card. It's got to be somewhere on the list. It's got to be somewhere on the list. Cleaford Scout must be the pendulum card a lot of you guys got into. I was debating putting Stargazer and Time Gazer on this list. But the amount of times I drew Time Gazer, I said, no, you're not making this list no matter what. Maybe the top five worst pendulum cards of all time. If you guys want to hear, the, if you guys want to see a top 10 worst pendulum cards of all time, let me know in the description below and I'll do it. Number 19. This list is so stacked that Magic the Abductor is only at number 19. I, I was planning to put this card number five. You guys know how much I love this card, but I put it at number 19. I think Abductor's broken, but you need your whole deck to, to be revolved around spell cards like Endymion in order for Abductor to be good. So would I play Abductor in a deck that didn't play 20 spell cards with like Endymion decks? No. So I didn't want to do it. And the biggest thing about this deck is every card in this whole in this whole 20 top 20 list uh, is going under the basis that every single card in Yu-Gi-Oh! is unbanned. So uh, Astrograph Sorcerer should be high as shit on this list because it's assuming Electromite is unbanned. It's assuming the Double Iris is unbanned. Assuming everything is unbanned right now, what's the best top 20 list? So that's what we're trying to go with here. And with that being said, number 18, I'm going to put Dark Worm. Because with Electromite on, a Dark Worm is pretty powerful, is extremely good. Obviously, just also for the legacy factor of what Dark Worm has done for Pendulums with Pendulum Call. So we have to put that up there. Speaking of Pendulum Call, Pendulum Call is number 17 on our list. This card is... Huh. Hello, Pencall. I love you. Pencall Dark Worm must be side by side, just as they are in your hands in Pendulum. You have five hand cards in hand, right? You already know. Pencall Dark Worm. That's it. And then Seven of Endemia, Spell Power Mastery, and you're good. And then uh, Astrograph Sorcerer, because you're playing uh, nothing. Best, best deck in the game. Uh, number 16 is Perform Pal Skulker Bat Joker. Now, Perform Pal Skulker Bat Joker, you would think would be a little higher. But the Monkey Board and Sorcerer, I'm not a fan of it. It is obviously a fantastic, amazing card. And one day it'll come back. One day. Uh, we're going to go with number 15, the card that Joker should be searching at all times. And that is Wisdom Eye Magician. Wisdom Eye Magician is my personal top three favorite pendulum card of all time. I love this card so much. I am I have Wisdom. So does this card. I love this card. It's one of my favorites of all time. And I refuse to not put Wisdom Eye Magician... The card that started it all for Magicians, my second favorite archetype after Endymion, this is the card that started it all. And speaking of Magicians, we're putting Harmonizing Magician number 14. The Magician combo. Let's go, baby. These are incredible cards, and they all need to be on a top 20 list. Now here it goes. Now here it goes. This is for some of the old heads that know about this card. Some of the new Yu-Gi-Oh! players might not know about this, but number 13 is one of the most broken pendulum cards in history that would be up there if it had a better archetype, and that is Performage Plush Fire. This card is, oh my god, ridiculous. You, we never got to experience this card with Electromite, and that's so sad to me. But the only reason I put Plush Fire number 13 and not like top 5 is because you're, you're forced to play random performance cards that are bricks just for this card to actually resolve. So I don't want to play random performance cards that aren't even Pendulums just for it to resolve. But Plush Fire, when it resolved with Luster Pendulum, was absolutely ridiculous. And speaking of Luster Pendulum, that card is number 12. Luster Pendulum is i would put this obviously not even in top 20 right now but the legacy that this card has for pendulums is unmistaking unmistakably incredible uh, what luster pendulum did with gilding ariane what it did with performance plush fire even what it did with pensork was remarkable back with pepe so uh, uh luster pendulum welcome to the list bro number 11 this card never got to see play with its best friend starving venom but odd eyes revolution dragon this card is absolutely busted with Odd-Eyes Revolution Dragon. Unfortunately for us, we never got the experience Odd-Eyes Revolution Dragon and Starving Venom together on the same ban list. Uh, uh, not banned. That would be a sight to behold. Konami, get it done. Unbanned Starving Venom. Let's get it. By itself right now, Revolution Dragon is this incredible card, but with Starving Venom, it's crazy. That's why I'm putting Revolution Dragon this high, where if it was had Starving Venom, it would uh, destroy the meta. That's what it would do. So, next, we got number 10. 
Now, this, ten, this top 10 is ridiculous. A lot of you would think I'll put this card way higher. This card's so broken, but the next cards above it are even more broken -er. It's a word. Trip English. Number 10, Celine. I know. A lot of you would think Celine, or should, I should put it way higher, but the next cards I'm about to say are so broken that there's actually Celine just can't make the th uh, top nine. And Celine is so good. I love, mwah, I love you, Celine, so much. You're my baby. But the next nine, considering that all Yu-Gi-Oh cards in history are unbanned, what how would have the most potential? What's the best potential cards of all time? I'm gonna put that at number ten. Number nine is Perform a Monkey Board. Uh, what Perform a Monkey Board does? It literally says that you have triple Joker, triple Monkey Board. You have six one card scales plus a card on field. What? Like you have six one? Like that's that, that, that's crazy, bro. That's crazy. You have six cards that say full scale. Full scale, draw one. Monkey board, lizards, pen summon, draw one. Like, it's insane. And the fact that Perform Pal Pendulum Sorcerer is also Perform Pal, that could search monkey board and Joker, you gotta put, in my opinion, one of the greatest Pendulum cards of all time, if not number one. I put Perform Pal Pendulum Sorcerer at number eight. Just because I've uh, uh, my other reasonings is very legit for the other seven. But Perform Pal Pendulum Sorcerer is number eight. I can even put this card at number one. I love this card that much. This is my number one favorite card. Back when Wisdom Mine was at three, when Pensorg just got released, this was my all-time favorite card. I'm gonna put it at number eight though, because the the what the next seven did was remarkable. At number seven, I'm gonna put some of you guys are gonna be upset at this. I'm not putting it even higher, but Magic Specter Kieran. Kieran is so broken. That's my baby. I should have named my cat Kieran because I love Kieran that much. But I'll just get a dog and call it Kieran. A dragon. A dragon. That's what Kieran is. Kieran is broken. Kieran auto wins games by itself. But, but, you can still get Nibiru, right? Like, Kieran, uh, even though it's broken, it doesn't, like, help the consistency of your deck. Which is why the next cards I'm about to say, they're really based on the consistency and about going second for your deck. That's extremely important. I cannot even begin to explain how important that is for Pendulum decks. You already know going first. All these cards I mentioned are for going first. And they're so broken for you going first. But... Is it really like, uh, like does it help going second? Kieran, yes, it helps going second, but it doesn't like help consistency. What if you just have like five scales and Kieran's one of them, it depends on me, you do nothing. Don't get me wrong, Kieran's broken, which is why I made the top seven in an all time list, the Hall of Fame. It made the Pendulum Hall of Fame at seven. So, number six, this card, as I brought up Nibiru earlier, imagine Pendulums and Yu Gi Oh! right now. Just think about it right now. Think of Pendulum right now in 2020 without Jackal King. Just think about it. Think of all the times where it protected you from Nibiru. Think of all the times where it protected you from going second, you resolve Servant, nice monster that doesn't do anything. Protected you from Baelus, from Ashes. Jackal, King, and Servant Mandemian is the best combo in Yu-Gi-Oh! since Triff Gaming and Team Samurai X1. So, that's a pretty solid Hall of Fame combo right there. So you gotta put Jackal King at number six, if not higher, because without Jackal King right now, Nibiru would be a gigantic problem for pendulums. That's all I gotta say. Number five, this card, assuming Electromite's unbanned, assuming Astrograph's unbanned, Double Iris Magician. Do you know the stuff that I did with pendulums before I even had Triff Gaming, before this even existed? With Electromite Legal, with Triple Astrograph and Triple Double Iris, do you have any idea the amount of shenanigans I did with Triple Firewall, uh, Adderall Pendulums, who remembers Adderall Pendulums? Double Iris Magician lasted like 10 days, but when it lasted, it was the most beautiful thing of gold with Electromite. Beautiful. I loved it. It deserves top five. Number four is Astrograph Sorcerer. Again, Electromite and Astrograph is the craziest combo since time. Absolutely broken. And together, maybe they'll see the light of day eventually. Maybe one day Electrum will come back to one. Maybe one day Astro will come back to one. Bring them back, Konami. Bring them back, bro. Bring them back. Number three. Imagine going second in Yu-Gi-Oh! today with Pendulums. Without Mighty Master the boss himself. This card has revolutionized Pendulums forever. The fact that you can go second now and know that this card is somewhere in your deck. This card is somewhere in your deck. And you can blow up your opponent's entire board going second. You've now given Pendulum something it's never had. You've now given Pendulums a go second bomb that destroys them. Everyone. It's, if not number three, it should be number one. Because of what it does for Pendulum going second. I put Mighty Master number three. 
Down to the last two. Who's going to be first, second? Number two. Servant of a DBA. Let's go. Imagine Pendulum City without Servant. You know what Servant does? Servant stops from all hand stops you from all hand traps. It protects you from all hand traps. It could bring out. It could protect you from trap trap cards. It could protect you from Nibiru. It could protect you from a non from a card that can't be destroyed. And bring out Reflection. What Servant of Demon does in this deck, you cannot replace. Period. You could bring out a Crowley. Get a freeze. Draw two. You can bring out a Jackal, protect yourself from hand traps. You can bring out a Mighty Master, protect yourself from trap cards and trap decks. Bring out a Reflection, but then get, and then Reflection, bounce back to Serving, get a free low scale. Hold Conscious Mighty Master. What Serving Union does is unmistakably incredible. Going first or second, you cannot put. Imagine like what would you rather have in your hand, Mighty Master or Serving Demon? Serving Demon is the number one card in this entire list to draw in your deck. If you were to draw one card in your deck in Yu-Gi-Oh history, what would it be? For me, it's Serving Demon. If I see, would you rather have a Serving Demon in your hand? Or would you rather have a Bomba Monkey Board now? Assuming you play your deck correctly and have 20 spells in your deck. If you answer anything other than Servant of Demon, you are incorrect. Uh, Servant of Demon is absolutely remarkable. So is Monkey Board, don't get me wrong. That's why I made the top 10 of our Hall of Fame here. The top 20 Pendulum Hall of Fame. And now, down to number one. Who's ready for number one? Number one on our list. Electromite, baby! Let's go! Heavy Metal Falls Electromite! The best card in Yu-Gi-Oh! history! The best Pendulum card in Yu-Gi-Oh! history! The best Link card in Yu-Gi-Oh! history! The best card ever made, baby! So get it to an Electromite Cloth playing in the description below. You can get it right now at TripGaming.com. Best card in the game, baby! And that wraps up our top 20 Pendulum cards of all time, aka the top 20 Yu-Gi-Oh! cards in history. Electromite forever. Hope you guys like this video. You guys could support Electromint by buying a 2 Electromint Cloth Play Mat in the description below. And by doing so, one purchase of 2 Electromint Cloth Play Mat shows Konami that they should bring Electromint back to life. So, hope you guys like this video, and we'll see you guys in the next video. If you guys like this top 20 pendulum cards, if you guys like this discussion videos that we do, let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see the top 10 worst pendulum cards of all time. I'll help you do it. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!